Good evening, everyone. It has taken me a long time to prepare this. Um, today, upon request by some subscriber and supporters, I'm doing a prediction for this year GC O level chemistry paper based on last year results and last year paper. I managed to get around 60 to 70% accuracy in predicting the type of questions and the topics that will appear. As what I predicted, there will be less emphasis on speed or reaction with only very little concept on catalyst tested. All right, because that was heavily tested in the previous year. So I predicted in 2022, not much will came out, but I also didn't manage to predict some of the concepts correctly, like Haber process was not tested and um, there was not much emphasis on organic chemistry last year compared to previous years. Okay, so it was a bit surprising and um, it became harder to predict, but I'll try my best to give you uh, what is necessary to, to study. So how do you study for this year paper was to look at what was tested in previous year, which is 2022. So whatever concept that was tested in 2022 will not be repeated in this year. Lah. Okay, That's what I can tell you. But uh, there are repeated concepts as observed from the previous paper. So for example, CFC and the bonding and structure of graphite is tested again last year. Now, so what was tested in 2022? This is a summary of the various concepts and topics tested. So for paper two, which is our focus, I'm not going to focus on paper one in my presentation because uh, paper one will best be predicted based on what came out in paper two. For example, uh, some of the more calculation questions and the concepts in metals were not tested in paper two. They will tested in paper one. All right. So if you want to predict what came out in what will come out in paper one, you can take a look at what was in paper two that year. It will be much more accurate. Now, so for paper two, the topic tested were atomic structure and chemical bonding, where candidates need to infer atomic structure, formula, and MR based on the different cross dot and cross diagrams. So it was something unusual. So they are required to determine uh, all this based on some of the cross dot and cross diagram. All right. And normally the students are required to draw a dot and cross, but this that year they were required to infer from there. So it was kind of interesting. Uh, as predicted, there was a question on diffusion and the factors affecting rate of diffusion. Okay. And some questions on kinetic model. Surprisingly, organic chemistry was not so heavily tested, except this and the database question. I don't really count the database question as a complete organic question because there were some questions that requires inference rather than remembering the content. So I think the O-level paper is trying to follow the A-level format. If you look at A-level organic chemistry questions, a lot of questions are not really testing on the content itself. They are testing on the fundamental concept and how it could be applied to new contexts. So the trend is moving in that way for organic chemistry, like if you realize. So last year, functional groups of organic compounds and the test for organic chem organic compounds like alcohol, carboxylic acids and alkenes were tested. The concept of weak acid and the effect of indicator and the reaction of alcohol oxidation to carboxylic acid. So empirical formula was also tested in the previous year paper. And of course, our group 17 halogens color and state came out as predicted displacement reactions involving group 17 halogens with the halide salts. Redox reaction in terms of electron transfer as predicted. CFC and ozone layer came out. Um, this is a bit shocking because it actually came out uh, just before that, uh, two or three years before that, and it repeated again. The concept of catalyst, which is a repeated concept from previous years. So, the learning point is you must do your tenure series because they do repeat the concept, although not the same question. If you understand the concepts, the answers, then you should be able to do very well for these questions. Fewer cells and more calculations, energy profile diagram where they compare between a reaction that is catalyzed and an uncatalyzed reaction. Evaporation of dryness, not much on salt preparation, more on just how do you make it more concentrated. Redox in terms of changes in oxidation number and the uses of acid. 
in the section B, uh, the free response sections, polymer is the database question. And the range of mass of polymer, which is very similar to previous year's paper, came out. So students who have drilled past that paper will have an upper hand. Okay, because the the way to answer that question is it's the same. How to draw addition polymers based on the given structure, just that there's something new called copolymer, but it's not that difficult to understand based on the information given. It's quite straightforward. Formation of bonds or tech configuration over gas where students are required to compare the elements across period two. Like how are they different when they form bonds from the metals all the way to non-metals? Like for the metals, they tend to um, lose electrons and to form octet configurations. All right. And for the non-metals, they tend to either gain electrons or if they form bonds with non-metals, they will share electrons to form octet configuration. And for the noble gas, because they already have a fully filled valence shell, they are not going to uh, form bonds. All right. There's uh, no need for them to gain, lose or share electrons to form a fully filled valence shell. And as usual, this always come out, comparing physical properties of a metal, graphite, and gaseous non-metal. Very standard question. And there are two questions where students are required to choose either or, and both happen to be electrolysis. Electrolysis, huh? So the first one is regarding re electrolysis of dilute sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride using inner electrodes. So they are required to compare between them the products and what happened when you add universal indicator. All right. The second question to select is an electrolysis versus displacement reaction where they compare between the two. All right. So in all the popular topics for paper two last year was atomic structure, chemical bonding, kinetic particle theory, functional groups, and the test of organic compounds, empirical formulas, Tokyo, which the focus is on volume of gas as expected. Group 17, halogens as expected. Redox, um, CFC and ozone layer. This is a bit surprising. Energy profile diagram as predicted. Yeah. And of course, we have uh, electrolysis. Very popular topic last year. Very, because it came out in both either or questions. Uh, and also um, metal displacement reaction, which is very little. And addition polymers in the database question. So based on what happened last year was uh, I predicted the chemical bonding to be tested. Though I predicted wrongly, like I did mention that it was um, dot and cross, but now they did test out dot and cross, but they are not required to draw. They are required to infer from there. I predicted correctly the kinetic particle theory. Organic compound is a bit... Uh, mm, bit miss, uh, hit and miss, all right, for me. More concept. Yes, he hit this also. This one, I didn't really predict. I thought it was going to be something like greenhouse gas. Energy profile diagram, yes. Electrolysis, yes. This always come out every year, but I just do not know whether it's a simple cell. Is it a purification, you see? So there can be many different questions of electrolysis. So this year, they are something very fundamental. They didn't use any application type of question this year, more on the fundamental. So maybe this year will be application, metal displacement and addition polymer. Actually, there are a few topics that are not heavily tested last year, like spill reaction and metals. Now, so for this year, I predict, but please do not blame me if they doesn't come out because it's really very difficult to pinpoint exactly. But I can only say what came out last year will not come out in heavy weightage for that particular concept. So the same topic could be tested, but different expect, uh, different learning outcomes will be assessed. So uh, separation techniques, chromatography haven't come out for some time, or other separation techniques or application, or it could even be a database questions. I'm really not um, entirely sure this year what will be the database question. It's a bit hard to predict. Lah. So uh, it could be either bonding, very unlikely, or maybe separation technique, more concept, or it could be maybe sorts or metals, or even electrolysis, I'm not sure. Okay, so um, more calculation as usual, but I think the weightage will not be so heavy. Yeah, the emphasis is less on such question. The emphasis is more on the thinking question. Like, like last year, they asked about green chemistry. Yeah, so less on those me me mechanical questions, okay? 
acid and bases, I think emphasis more on the reactions like acids, red carbonate, the, the, the acids, bases, and uh, ammonium chloride. And of course, um, Haber process, I'm still predicting that this year because they haven't come out for some time. Salts preparation and concepts related to salts and maybe precipitations or others. QA didn't come out no much in the paper too. Huh? So let's see if the practical don't have QA, get ready for paper one and paper two. QA, they could have a flow chart to answer questions or related concepts. Lah. Periodic table trends, not much on group on metal this year. Last year, this year maybe, or even transition metals on the gas. I'm not saying you can totally throw away group 70. They will still test, but I don't think it's as much as last year. Metals, this time I really bet myself on this because this is the last year they're testing on blast furnace. This is the final year. So I think they will test a bit on it. So whatever that will be the last time this 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 year batch, they will test the uh, they will test a bit more, a bit more. Lah. And of course, pure metal versus alloy and some of the reactions involving metal. Not much on reactions or metal huh, on last year paper. So maybe this year they'll talk about the reducing agent like hydrogen and carbon reacting with the metal oxides. Mm, maybe some questions related to it. Air focus more on biofuel, carbon neutral, acid rain, pollutants, composition of air and its users. Organic chem, yes, I still predict it will be a heavy weightage. Huh? Although last year not very heavy, only about maybe 20 marks out of 80. This year maybe 20, 25, a bit more, a bit more. Yes, uh, electrolysis application this time around, but not as heavy as last year, that's for sure. It will be a much lower weightage. Redox, yes, as usual, very standard question. Energy change, this year may test on enthalpy change calculations using bond energy and related concepts like what is the difference between exo and endothermic reactions? Yes, speed of reaction, get ready. So if the practical paper doesn't have a speed of reaction topic, get ready for paper two or paper one. For practical, I will just predict it could be either titration. Last year, no titration. So this year could be, last year was just uh, heating till no mass change then they have qa and some um i think plotting of graph if i'm not not wrong yeah so this year i think it's getting harder to predict exactly what will come out for practical so uh what i can say that is either titration or thermal titration very likely because they didn't test titration last year so better Get ready la, for this one. La. Okay. Yeah, I'm not joking. Ah. So better know your, you know, titration calculations very, very well. Okay. Better know that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, know how to present your um, titration table well. La. Cannot be like, I don't know, you know, what whatever. La. Okay. Oh, there was a... The paper, let me look at it. La. The paper. Hmm. Paper 3 of O-level paper last year, which is the practical component, 40 marks. Ah. So last year, the first question is on heating of hydrated copper sulfate. So they are heating it until all the water uh, evaporate off and then they measure the mass and do some more calculations to calculate the value of X in the hydrated copper two sulfate formula, something that I have done in theory before. Uh, and some experimental related question, if you hit the sample, will you give a more accurate value? Why and why not? All right. Um, and they ask a question, another question on temperature change only, about enthalpy change. Then some QA on hydrogen peroxide and MnO2, the catalyst are an oxidizing agent KMnO4. Then the next one is a planning question on, oh, the rate of reaction came out for planning. Yeah, to investigate the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction. Yeah, very standard question. Then they have a question on, yep, plot, uh, sketching a graph on how the rates of, how the concentration changes with time now, of potassium manganese. Yeah, rate of reaction. Oh, so reaction came out in the planning question. So this year, 
titration, QA maybe on a small scale or don't have, appear at all. Mm. The planning question maybe on metals. Yeah, speed. Maybe it's a full scale speed erection or maybe no, maybe just energy throwing metal into acid and measure the different temperature change. All right. Could be either that. Planning a bit difficult. Maybe planning is a bit hard to predict like, because a lot of questions can come out like maybe determine empirical formula even. All right. So it may include a database questions without carrying out experiment. Yeah. So it could be three practical tasks and one short planning question as usual. So that's it. Thank you very much.